Ali voting has begun in Iraq. The elections are a major reaction to the protest that rocked the country in 2019. But there is little evidence that the vote will make things better. Many are calling it an election that holds a key to its future. With growing anti-government protests in the country and the rise of independent candidates in the election, what will this mean for Baghdad? Independent candidate Omar Al Hamdani is confident as he speaks in front of a large audience ahead of the polls. He thinks traditional blocs will have to concede more seats, a response to the anti government protests in 2019. More scarred Iraq is heading for polls. They are being held early in response to mass protests against the government in 2019. But there is little evidence that suggests anything will change. The focus is, however, on independent candidates. The elections are being held under a law, one that is meant to help independent candidates. The law allows voters to elect individual lawmakers. Earlier, they had to choose from party lists. Each member of the parliament can now represent a specific electoral district. The previous political parties and factions did not provide any services to citizens. Candidates would be under the control of parties and did not have the power to take decisions. It would lie with the head of the faction or the party that did not manage to provide services to citizens over the last 18 years. 3,249 candidates are competing the elections. 789 of them are independent. Out of them, 156 are women. This wasn't always the case in Iran. More women are running because there is a new gender quota. 25% of seats in the cabinet are reserved for women. At the beginning, I entered through the women's quota, and the quota was a form of affirmative action, and it protects the presence of women in the House of Representatives. At this time, we were suffering from sectarianism. Being a moderate woman was very difficult. The sect would constitute protection for those who seek its protection and some would use it as an identity. I didn't use it. My identity was feminist. That was my identity. In theory, the changes should empower independent voices, but the shadow of traditional blocs loom over them. Questions have been raised about many non-aligned candidates, raising questions about the impact of the reform. For many, it is simply an electoral maneuver. Shiite majority groups are expected to remain in power. This has been the case in the war-torn nation since Saddam Hussein's Sunni-led regime was removed from power. But the Shiites are also sharply divided. The reason is Iran's growing influence. The favorite this time is the Sadrist movement. Sadr has long been a crucial player in Iraqi politics. He has millions of devoted followers among Iraq's Shiites. Also powerful is the pro-Iran Shiite camp around Hashed al-Shabi. It held the second biggest bloc, the Fatah Alliance. Activists who took to the streets during the protests are also split. While some are boycotting the election, others are taking part. In Iraq, alliances tend to form up and break after each election. Sometimes entire blocs can change sides. The vote count and division of seats matter, but at the end it is the horse trading and parliamentary coalitions that are crucial to building a new government. This vote's aftermath will set the tone for the coming years. Will the country usher in a new ruling class, or will the same political groups wield power in the war-torn nation? West Asia Bureau, we own. World is one.